Okay, so again, let's look at this wood pellet example. Um, and let's look at the numbers for this one. So our expected value with sample information is the following formula, and we're going to make sense of it with this actual example. Um, so what we're going to talk about are uh, two possible forecasts that are going to happen. Either the forecaster forecasts high demand. Now the expected value related to that is a 10.39 million. Look at the, um, the previous video detailing how to calculate this number. Uh, we'll also look at it in Excel in a minute. Um, the probability of the forecaster forecasting high demand is the 0.755. Again, look at uh, one of the first videos on doing Bayes with these applied examples here in this section. Um, and we talked about how to get this probability. Uh, and then the second expected value uh, is the expected value when the forecaster forecasts not high demand. So let's say if there's no change or if there's a decrease. Uh, it's a 6.79 million. The odds of him forecasting not high demand or no change is the 24.5%. Let's plug this all in to get the EV with sample information. Okay, so here it is. It gives us 9.51. Again, where all of these values here are explained here. Um, okay, now uh, moving on, let's take that 9.51 and put it in to our formula. It is the expected value with sample information and we're going to go plug it in to get the expected value of sample information. Okay, so 9.51 minus our cost minus our expected value without sample information. So we still need that too. Let's go get that. Okay, what that is, that's just our regular expected value. We've calculated that before. It's a 7.95 million. Let's look at that now. Let's pop that in. Here it is now. Okay, uh, that gives us the difference between those two is 1.56. Subtract from that your cost with a little caveat. It depends where you read as to whether they subtract the cost or add it. The reason is the following. Some people in their spreadsheets would denote all costs as negatives. Then you do not want to subtract here because you don't want to like kind of double subtract, if you will. Um, that would effectively add the cost. So if your cost is listed as negative in your spreadsheet, then just do a plus symbol here. Uh, if your cost is listed as a positive number in your spreadsheet, then just do a minus right there. Okay, carrying on, um, that little note here, we always want our expected values to be higher than zero. We want to expect to be making money. So in this case, oh, sorry, let's fix that here. Okay, so in this case, we have 1.56 minus our cost needs to be greater than zero. Okay, so that gives us the following, that 1.56 needs to be greater than our cost, or if you will, our cost needs to be less than 1.56. This cost that I'm talking about is the cost uh, for your forecaster, or if you're doing some sort of sampling, um, or some sort of pilot study before you actually release something, it's the cost of that study, or the cost of paying that forecaster, or that team of forecasters. Okay, so we want it to be less than 1.56, or if you will, less than 1,560,000. So we shouldn't pay any more than that for a forecast. In fact, we should pay quite a bit less than that, but that's our very upper limit. And this may feel like a lot, uh, but it depends what you're forecasting. Um, when I was doing my master's, um, our, there was a team of us at the university. Um, our supervisor had been given a $1 million grant to do some mathematical forecasting for a new technology that had no other way of figuring out what was going on except for having us model it. And of course it took hours upon hours upon hours by multiple grad students and professors. So um, our final bill was right around a million dollars. So that might feel like a lot, but it depends what you're forecasting. Let's go have a quick look at how to do these calculations in Excel. Okay, so here we are. I'm just going to set the um, sampling or forecasting cost to zero for now. That will actually give us kind of what we're willing to pay, and we can play with that value later. Um, now, the expected value with sample, sample information, again, is that maximum um, of the expected values uh, from the following. So our first outcome is that the forecaster forecasted high demand. Here are EMVs. Grab the higher of the two. It's the 10.39. You can either just grab the 10.39 or do a maximum call here. And then you need to multiply that by the probability of the forecaster forecasting high demand, which is right here, the 7 um, point, or sorry, the 0.755, uh, the odds of the forecaster forecasting high demand, which we calculated in our Bayes calculations. 
Okay, carrying on. We're not done yet. We need to then talk about the event where the forecaster forecasts low or no change in demand. Uh, and look at those EMVs, take the maximum of those two, it's a 6.79 times that by the probability of the forecaster forecasting no increase or um, a low demand. Uh, the forecaster does that 24.5% of the time. So we go times by that value, and that gives us our expected value with sample information. Okay. Good. Okay, sorry, that's better. I was just grabbing the wrong spreadsheet here. So it should be 9.51. Uh, the EMV without sample information is just that max EMV from before, which is a 7.95. Uh, and the EMV of sample information, take this EMV with sample information, subtract from that your cost, subtract from that this EMV, and here we are. It's the 1.56 million. 